Welcome back to another sysadmin tutorials video series. In this series we'll be showing you how to install and configure VMware View 5. There are a few components that need to be installed for your View 5 installation. First up, we'll need to create an SQL database followed by a 64-bit DSN on your vCenter server. Secondly, we'll be installing View Composer on our vCenter server. And thirdly, we'll install View Connection Server on a separate Windows 2008 R2 server. So my lab contains all Windows 2008 R2 servers and consists of a Windows Domain Controller, SQL 2008 R2 server, vCenter 5 server, a Windows 2008 R2 server that's ready for View Connection Server, and lastly an ESXi 5 host that is connected to our vCenter server. Once we have our installation completed, we'll move on to the second part of this series, which will be configuration. So with that all said, let's get started. So here I am on my SQL server, and first up, we're going to be creating the database. So I'm going to just open up my SQL Server Management Studio, and I'll just be logging in with the Windows authentication. And let's just expand our databases. So as you can see, I'm using this server for a few other databases as well, like SRM and uh, Update Manager, also vCenter. Let's uh, right-click on Databases and select New Database. And I'm going to be calling the database VMware View. And in Options, I just want to change my recovery model to Simple so that my log files don't fill up the drive. I'm going to click OK now and the database is created. So let's move down to security and logins. What we're going to do is create a local SQL user account that will have access through to my VMware View server. The Composer server installation does not allow any Windows server user accounts to be created here. It has to be a local SQL account. Um, it's not supported. Whether it works or not, I'm not too sure. I haven't tried, but uh, it's definitely not supported. So what we're going to do is right-click our logins. We'll click New Login. And we'll use SQL Server Authentication. And so for the login name, we'll just create View Service. And we'll give it a password. And we'll click OK. Now let's look for our View Service account. And let's right click it, go to properties. We'll go down to user mapping. So in user mapping, let's select our VMware View database and let's give it DB owner access. So it has full access to the database, can read, write, and do what it wants. And we'll click OK. So we can close our, our SQL Server Management Studio now. And that's pretty much the database setup. Now let's move over to our vCenter server. So here I'm on my vCenter 5 server. So here I'm on my vCenter 5 server, and what we're going to be doing is creating the ODBC DSN connection through to our SQL server. So let's click on Start, and we'll go All Programs, Administrative Tools, and Data Source ODBC. So let's go down to System DSN, and we'll be creating a DSN in here. We'll click Add. Now we need to select SQL Server Native Client. If you don't see this option here, you can install it off the SQL Server CD. It comes as a .msi file. Uh, once you install it, just go out of ODBC, restart it, come back in again, and you'll have this option here. Uh, if you have that option already, that's great. Let's click it, and we'll click on Finish. Now for the DSN name, we'll just give a VMware View. For the description, VMware View Composer. And my SQL server is called server-sql. So let's click Next. Now, we use the SQL server authentication. So our login ID for that database was view service. And I'll type my password. And we'll click Next. We'll change the default database down to VMware View. 
and click next. We'll accept all the default settings here and I'll click finish. Now I'm going to test the data source by clicking here. And the test completed successfully, which is all good news. So I'm going to click OK, click OK again, and click OK. So now DSN connection set up, my database is set up, we're ready to install VMware View 5 Composer. So I've downloaded all the View 5 installation files to my desktop here in this folder. So here it is here, VMware View Composer. And like anything with Windows 2008, what I want to do is right click it and select Run as Administrator. Click on Yes. We'll click Next at this screen. Click Next at this screen. Accept the license agreement and Next. Now I'll accept the default installation path here. So I'll click Next. Now this window will enter our ODBC DSN name, which was VMware View. The username that we created was called View Service, and I'll enter in my password. You also have an option here to set up the DSN if you like. Now, if I click on this, I can see under System DSN my VMware View connection here. DSN connection. So I'll just click on cancel. So with that all done, let's click next. I'm going to accept the default SOAP port, which is 18443. And as you can see in the SSL certificate message here, there's no SSL certificates were found on the machine, so a default certificate will be created. So I click next. And the installation's ready to get underway, so I'm going to click install. And the installation is completed, so I'm going to click Finish. And now we can move on to the Connection Server installation. So I'm going to jump over to my other Windows 2008 R2 machine. And here we are here, it's just a blank machine connected to my lab domain. Um, I've got Acrobat Reader installed on it. So I've got the installation files in my C drive under software and here you go here view connection server so I'm going to right click on it select run as administrator the wizard begins and we'll click next next again I'll accept the license agreement click next and I'll install into the default path once again click next now there's a few different installation types we can do with Connection Server. Uh, if you're not watching this video in HD, I'm just going to read out the descriptions for each one uh, so that you can see. So for View Standard Server, it says perform a standard full installation. This is used to install a standalone instance of View Connection Server or the first instance of a group of servers. View Replica Server, perform a replica instance install joining an existing server instance. This is used to install a second or subsequent server in a group of servers that all automatically share the same directory configuration. The other option, view security server. Perform an install of just the security server components. This is typically used on servers in a DMZ to run an appropriate subset of the full view connection server functionality. A security server instance must be able to connect to a standard or replica instance server. And lastly, the view transfer server. Install as transfer server to manage active transfers of local desktops. I'm just going to be doing a plain standard server installation here in this tutorial. So I will select that and click next. Now I'll have the installation wizard configure my Windows firewall automatically. It will open all the necessary ports for me. And I'll click next. And here will be the default installation path for my connection server. So with that, I'm going to click install and the installation will begin. And my installation has complete. So I'm going to click finish. I'll close this screen here. And as you can see, I've got a view administrator console icon on my desktop. So let's double click that. And I'll click continue to this website. 
and here we have the view administrator login. So I'm going to log in as administrator. And I'll click login. And here we are at the VMware View 5 dashboard. So I'm going to be stopping the video here as that concludes the installation component of View 5. Now if you move on to part 2 of this video series, we'll talk much more into the configuration of View 5 and we'll start to deploy our desktops. But I'd like to thank you very much for watching and uh, please head on over to my website www.sysadmintutorials.com for many more tutorials on VMware, NetApp, Microsoft, Cisco, Checkpoint, etc. Thanks again for watching. Bye for now.